Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I'm here to talk about Wellington Terman versus Jared Gooden. Gooden is 29 years old, 22 and 9 is a pro, and he's got 5 inches of reach over 27-year-old Terman, who is 18 and 7. Wellington Terman is more of a jiu-jitsu guy, uh, 8 submissions and his 18 wins, but his striking is coming along and definitely gaining my respect. Uh, he's got 4 TKO victories and 6 decisions. He is... Uh, he's been beaten twice by knockout, which is something that concerns me, but those were against big, strong middleweights, and uh, his other five losses come by decision. He's never been tapped. Andrew Sanchez knocked him out standing, the clean right hand down the center, and Bruno Silva ground and pound knocked him out. He just insisted on the ground and pound knockout, and he got it. But uh, that is an exceptionally dangerous middleweight. And here he is at he's at welterweight for the second time, which is good. He made the cut against Randy Brown in his last fight. I mean, he lost the fight, but Randy Brown's got the frame of a light heavyweight, first of all. And second of all, the fact that Wellington Terman made the weight, fought hard for 15 minutes, and didn't get knocked out, too, uh, means he probably belongs at welterweight. I think that's really his primary concern. If, he, if it's not going to tax his chin... Uh, then he should be at welterweight, especially after feeling that middleweight strength of uh, Andre Petrovsky in his last fight. Uh, here he's fighting Jared Gooden, who's also got two defeats by TKO, and the rest all being by decision. He's got nine losses, two by knockout, or TKO, and seven by decision. Guy Bruno Oliveira TKO'd him earlier on, and Impa Kasanganai, former UFC fighter and current millionaire and PFL champion, uh, Impa knocked him out uh, a year or two ago. And he didn't knock him unconscious, but he clipped him and beat off on him until the ref stopped it. It was a standing TKO. Uh, his other losses are all by decision, though, as I mentioned. Michael Graves, who, that guy was a really good fighter, uh, even though it kind of fizzled out for some domestic violence, I think. Uh, Alan Joban, which I think was his UFC debut, that was a fight where he was just up against a better striker, and he was playing catch-up uh, the whole fight there. Joe Ban was much better. I think I think that was Joe Ban's retirement fight. Uh, Abubakar Namagomedov. Uh, Randy Brown also beat him. Randy ba Brown beat both guys against Jared Gooden. It was a kickboxing bout purely, uh, pretty much. And uh, Jared Gooden had a little bit of success, but he was... Largely outstruck from the outside. Tried to take some of that away with calf kicks. And uh, never really got the uh, the results he wanted there. Carlston Harris was his most recent defeat. I think that was on short notice uh, for Jared Gooden. I believe he stepped in on short notice. And Carlston Harris uh, just blanketed him pretty much. Took him down, held him down, and neutralized him. But... Uh, Jared Gooden, he has offensively uh, a lot of danger. He's got 22 wins, as I said, 11 by knockout. He's taken out some good guys. Nicholas Stolze in the UFC, that was round one. Uh, it's maybe his highest profile finish. Although he beat Curtis Millinder with leg kicks a few years ago, or two years ago, whatever. Uh, he he's on he was on a two-fight winning streak before coming back to the UFC. He uh, well, one of them was an injury, but then he beat the guy, uh, this guy, Demarcus Jackson, got him out of there in round two, and uh, that was a good win. He hurt him very early on, uh, showing his power. Wasn't able to get him out of there early, though. It was taken down a little bit and whatever, but then got him out of there later. I think uh, Jared Gooden has, he's still, even though he's got a lot of experience, he still looks raw. When he strikes, he just doesn't seem, he's not the most fluid fighter. I don't think anybody would ever just describe Jared Gooden as fluid. He's more raw and even somewhat stiff, but he's dangerous. He is pretty damn tough. Again, the one knockout loss or TKO loss I've seen, Impa Kasang and I, was against Impa, who's very dangerous himself, and Jared didn't go out. And uh, I think uh, with his danger, his... The fact that he, you know, his weakness, his primary weakness is he's being able to, he's susceptible to being taken down and out grappled. That's how, you know, there was this other loss. He fought this guy, 
Santiago or something. I don't know. But uh, he was definitely neutralized with wrestling. That was like five, six years ago. It's always been the cleanest path to victory against Jared Gooden. And while I think, I know Wellington Terman is a much better overall grappler, I don't think he's the wrestler that is going to uh, neutralize Jared Gooden. I think Jared Gooden's going to be able to keep the standing. I think he has more physicality and athletic advantages. And I think Jared Gooden is also more dangerous on the feet. Although I'll say this, Wellington Terman striking has come along. It's come a long way where I think uh, if there are no big moments or even half big moments, Wellington Terman's probably leading the dance and uh, has better technique than Jared Gooden. But they aren't dancing. They are fighting. I think Jared Gooden is a little bit healthier. I trust him anyway, and he's a much more natural uh, welterweight. He's been there for some time. I still have a little bit of doubt about Wellington Terman, and I'm going with Jared Gooden here. I think Jared Gooden, I, it wouldn't surprise me at all if he took a decision from Wellington Terman, uh, but I also think there's a good chance he has a, a knockout. You know, uh, Wellington Terman, again, he's only been knocked out twice, but he is sucking an extra 15 pounds out of him uh, before this fight, and Jared Gooden, Definitely has above average power and five inches of reach to complement it. So Jared Gooden is the pick. Jared Gooden is the bet at plus 165. No props have become available. Uh, maybe I'll drop something on knockout. And uh, a good hedge, in my opinion, would be Wellington Terman winning a decision. I don't think he's got what it takes to get Jared Gooden out of there. Uh, no one's ever submitted Jared Gooden. I think Terman could do that, but... Uh, on paper, it just doesn't seem likely. And I think uh, Wellington Tournament, again, wins a lot of the small battles. I trust his overall technical game more. He's a guy who uh, I still think of as more of a grappler, but his striking is coming along, and I trust him technically. So maybe a hedge with him by decision, but the pick is Jared Gooden. I think he's got a lot going for him here, and I saw those odds, and I pounced on it right away. So Jared Gooden, like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos. Sounded like I was saying that to Jared Good. Make sure you fucking subscribe, Mr. Good.